Good morning, everyone. I'm very delighted to have, an, have a chance to have a brief interview, a brief talk with Mr. Potakis, the Greek Ombudsman here today um, on a very timely and very important issue, actually. Um, my name is Neda Noraikia. I'm head of the new migration program based in Thessaloniki in Greece um, on migration in the region in Europe. And um, I welcome very much Mr. Andreas Potakis. Allow me to briefly introduce him to those of you who might not know him yet. Uh, Mr. Potakis was elected by um, Greek parliament to the position of the Greek Ombudsman in 2016 for a term of six years. He's a professor at the European Law and Governance School and the alternate director of the Academy of European Public Law as well. Prior to this position, um, Mr. Potakis served as a legal advisor to the Hellenic government, also as a head of the legal office. He has published extensively on a wide range of areas, including inter alia European public law and the legal protection of human rights. So a real expert in the field. And um, Mr. Potakis, you recently published the results of your investigation on alleged pushbacks of foreign nationals who had arrived in Greece seeking international protection to um, to Turkey. Um, well, for, for those in the in the audience who did not have a chance to read the report yet, could you just briefly give us an overview of the main results of your main fundings? Sure, thanks very much for this opportunity. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to make a clarification. Uh, it is not a, a final report, it is an interim report. Uh, the reason why we I felt that uh, there was a need to produce and publish uh, an interim report, meaning that the investigation is ongoing, is uh, still continuing, it has to do with the fact that um, this report uh, relates to a non-initiative investigation launched by uh, my office uh, back in 2017, uh, in uh, the summer of 2017, in fact. Um, where we had an, uh, sort of a, a, an incident, uh, an alleged uh, pushback uh, in the region of Evros, the land border between Greece and Turkey, that is, uh, which we felt that uh, merited our investigation. Uh, and so we opened up a non initiative investigation. That means without having any uh, individual complaining directly to us and requesting directly the investigation of the incident. We did it because we felt that it was a, a very serious allegation and uh, that um, uh, all forms and types of investigation were in order uh, so that we could uh, uh, hopefully uh, reach uh, at the end of the investigation uh, the truth of the matter, the truth of what has happened. Since 2017, this own initiative investigation has been extended and expanded several times by decisions that I have taken in order to include other allegations, additional allegations of uh, alleged pushbacks uh, in the Ebros region. Again, I, I'm referring to the land borders between Greece and Turkey. Um, the land borders, for those who are not aware um, uh, of the geography of, of the area, uh, basically uh, run parallel to the Ebros River uh, in that region. So there is a river dividing, let's say, Turkey and Greece uh, the, land, the lands of Turkey and Greece at the northeast of uh, Greece. Um, so we have expanded and extended the investigation to include other incidents that have been brought to our attention. And therefore, after three and a half years, I felt the need, I felt the obligation, if I may put it this way, to produce uh, at least some first indications and some first findings <clears throat> that we have uh, come across that we have reached in the course of these three and a half years of investigation so that people uh, may know exactly what this investigation was all about or is all about and how far has it gone so far. Uh, I repeat, the, the, the report is an interim report uh, and the investigation is still ongoing. Now, uh, as to what exactly is included in the investigation, in the report, uh, and the interim report that we produced and we published uh, recently, less than a month ago. Well, um, our role as ombudsman uh, is quite different from the role of other bodies that have powers, uh, mandates and duties, in fact, to investigate 
such incidents. Uh, our role is to conduct administrative investigations and in certain instances under a specific mandate uh, awarded to the Greek Ombudsman by um, government to also uh, participate in disciplinary investigations involving uh, uniformed officers of the enforcement agencies of Greece. That means the police clearly, but also the Coast Guard, uh, the fire brigade, of course, and uh, also the prison guards. Uh, this is, if I may, uh, if I may put it in a simplistic way, this is the, 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 the scope, let's say, of the investigation that can be undertaken by the Greek Ombudsman. Uh, within this scope of investigation, what we have identified is first of all, uh, a pattern, uh, both in terms of the uh, particulars, the, the, the specifications of the allegations, and I'm referring to the actual narrative of the incidents that have been reported to us, uh, a remarkable, uh, I would say, uh, similarity in terms of the uh, particulars of the claims of those who are alleged to have been pushed back, of the process of pushing, of the pushback process. Uh, and we have also identified a remarkable repetition, a pattern again, uh, in the way that the Greek authorities have reflected on these allegations. Um, now, on the first point, the pattern that we have identified um, has to do with um, the, the different stages that have, that have been reported to us of the pushback uh, sort of incidents. Uh, I, I said already that uh, we feel that uh, there is a remar remarkable uh, similarity on the reported incidents uh, that we have collected, uh, reaching um, such uh, specifications, such details uh, as to, for instance, the color of the van that is being used to transport third country nationals, allegedly to transport third country nationals, from specific places, again, allegedly uh, reported to belong or to be under the authority of the Greek police uh, back to Turkey. Uh, so there is a remarkable similarity. We, we do highlight certain characteristic, if I may uh, call them this way, uh, elements of these uh, sort of uh, descriptions. Um, the, on the second point, on the similarity or the repetitive nature, if I may call it this way, of the responses that we have received so far on the part of the Greek authorities. Um, I would like to share with you, with the audience, that uh, the official, if I may call it this way, line of, uh, of uh, uh, arguments uh, raised or pre presented by the Greek authorities is that such incidents uh, do not occur. This is the first line, if I may call it this way, uh, of addressing the allegations that such incidents do not take place, that um, there are no sufficient information or uh, uh, evidence to suggest that in fact such incidents do take place. Uh, the second line, if I may call it this way, of defense uh, on the part of the Greek authorities is that even if they do take place, uh, Greek authorities, Greek officials, uh, uniformed members of uh, the enforcement agencies of the Greek authorities are not involved uh, because the uh, Greece and the Greek authorities fully comply with the guarantees of uh, the rule of law, of protecting fundamental rights for all uh, individuals residing within the Greek territory and of course of the requirements uh, posed by international law when it comes to the protection of third country nationals on the move. Um, and um, the third, if I may call it again, line of defense, the third sort of uh, version is that, um, again, if such incidents do take place, um, uh, it probably has to, to do with the involvement of smuggling networks that operate uh, both apparently in Turkey and in Greece and are uh, responsible uh, for any such incident that may take place. Although, as I mentioned, the, the first line of defense is that such incidents do not take place within the Greek territory on, uh, at all. Now, what we uh, have tried to establish even at this early stage of our investigation, I understand that three and a half years is, 
it's quite a long time, but the investigation, I hope I will have the opportunity to explain, uh, is not a simple one. And it's not a, a uh, it, it, it has a number of, of hurdles that it has to overcome in order to produce credible, indisputable uh, evidence of either the, uh, the of either the fact that pushbacks do take place and in fact with the participation or uh, consent or uh, with uh, some form of involvement or uh, omission uh, in terms of taking uh, the necessary action on the part of the Greek authorities or that such incidents uh, actually eventually do not take place or that uh, if they do take place, they, they are clearly, as perhaps the Greek authorities stipulate, they are the work of smuggling networks uh, alone. Now, um, what we are trying to establish with, it, with this uh, sort of uh, findings that we are sharing with, uh, with the wider public is that uh, we don't feel satisfied by the uh, responses and the way the responses we have received by the Greek authorities and the way that the Greek authorities have treated uh, the, the phenomenon uh, of um, alleged pushbacks in the Evros region. We don't feel satisfied for the following reasons. And we don't feel that enough has been done on their part. Uh, first of all, uh, we try to, if I may put it this way, we try to break down and we try to, to assess the position on the part of the Greek authorities. Okay, so as I mentioned, the first position is that such incidents do not take place. And even if they do, we are not involved in it. Um, so uh, we are, um, uh, we, we come to the conclusion, to this interim conclusion anyhow, that so far, the response on the part of the Greek authorities does not go uh, far enough in order to support this position. What we would have expected uh, would be for that uh, the Greek authorities would have launched investigations for each and every such allegation so as to prove or disprove uh, the, the, credi the credibility of the allegation itself. It is, uh, it is not a matter of choice, I have to explain. Uh, it is a duty on the part of the authorities to investigate such allegations. It is a duty on the part of the internal bodies of any uniformed agency uh, allegedly involved to uh, investigate the allegation, to investigate the credibility of uh, the reported uh, sort of incidents, and to try to seek uh, the truth, uh, not only uh, so that it may, if I may put it this way, uh, ensure that the, uh, the prestige uh, of uh, the, the uh, enforcement agency itself is preserved, but also because uh, under law, it has a duty to investigate such incidents uh, and in fact, uh, sanction uh, those who may be involved in them. Uh, the second uh, reason why we feel that uh, it is not sufficient, or that, that, that is not satisfactory, the answers that we have received so far are not satisfactory, is that if we take the other line of defense, the other line of argumentation on the part of the Greek authorities into account, that is that um, even if such incidents do take place in the Evros region, uh, as I mentioned, the authorities are not involved. So apparently there are smuggling networks operating uh, in this area. Again, uh, is, is an argument that uh, we feel is unsupported by the actions that have already taken place on the part by the Greek authorities because we have not been informed and we are not aware of any plan, of any sort of concerted plan, of any systematic attempt to disrupt such uh, networks, such smuggling networks. So just simply by claiming that there are some people who constitute smuggling networks that operate within the Greek territory and are committing such crimes under penal law, uh, for us is not sufficient because we don't see the response on the part of the authorities uh, if such a claim is to be upheld. Uh, if the authorities believe that there are smuggling networks, to put it differently, if the authorities believe that there are smuggling networks operating within the Greek territory, again, they have a duty uh, to do everything possible to identify them, to disrupt them, and to bring them to justice. And we don't feel that um, uh, any such plan has 
uh, in fact been put in place. And therefore, uh, as the sort of a conclusion to our interim report, we make two basic recommendations, if I may uh, uh, say. Uh, one, that it is to us unacceptable uh, that uh, allegations are not are not uh, sort of uh, uh, leading to an opening up of a proper internal investigation on the part of the enforcement agencies involved or allegedly involved. And secondly, that we urge the Greek authorities uh, to, uh, to design, to conduct, uh, to put in place a concerted comprehensive plan uh, to tackle the uh, possible or plausible uh, scenario of uh, uh, smuggling networks operating apparently freely <laughs> within the Greek territory. Um, clearly, as I mentioned, the investigation is ongoing and we are assessing all the uh, findings that we receive and that we uh, discover. So I'm hoping also that we will be able to be more specific and more precise as to uh, exactly how we evaluate the uh, entirety of uh, the findings that uh, we will have collected when we will be uh, ready to present our final report on the incident. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure the interim report is very helpful and of, of big um, value uh, to the overall debate because, um, as you say, there are these alleged um, incidents um, being reported over and over again for the last years. Um, so the debate is already ongoing. And um, I was just wondering, you, you yourself described your, in a way, limited mandate to investigate yourself. And um, then again, you propose that the, the Greek authorities um, start a, a serious and, and, and proper investigation. But when it comes to um, investigation, I was wondering whether the, the bodies that are um, alleged to be part of these incidents, are they the right body themselves to, to investigate as, as, as well? Or is there any other body institution that could support that, you know, has less of a pro probably um, um, dilemma, so to say, um, to, to investigate in a serious way? Uh, well, yeah, sure. Um, I'll try to answer the question uh, by uh, also mentioning a few ideas that we have, uh, a few proposals that we are trying to put forward to the Greek authorities and also, if I may say so, to the EU policymakers, uh, given the fact that now there are a number of serious issues that are being debated at the EU level uh, relating to the overall uh, redirection or redesigning of the asylum and migration policy in Europe. Um, first of all, uh, every ombudsman has a specific toolkit uh, that uh, he or she may uh, make use of. Uh, this toolkit is uh, provided by uh, the statute of the ombudsman office and uh, any other pieces of legislation that may have been produced by national parliaments. Um, the Ombudsman, as I mentioned, has uh, uh, the capacity to conduct administrative investigations and administrative investigations have specific procedural rules and can lead and can have specific sort of outcomes. Uh, we as the Greek Ombudsman also have a special mandate to investigate uh, from a disciplinary perspective, uh, wrongdoings, offenses uh, that may have been committed also by uniformed uh, members of the enforcement agencies of Greece. And this is, again, a, a different type of investigation uh, that has its own procedural rules that we feel, uh, and we, we do so, we feel that we have to respect completely, fully, so that we, will, so that we do not put, we do not jeopardize uh, the impartiality uh, uh, of the investigation and of the findings uh, that we will be assessing within the investigation. Um, having said that, for instance, our investigation is limited when it comes to the performance or the actions or omissions of uh, individuals who are not uniformed members of uh, enforcement agencies. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we cannot 
uh, investigate this claim of smuggling networks operating uh, within the Greek territory in the same way that other uh, authorities uh, can do so. And I will, I will get to that uh, very shortly. Uh, now, uh, the second point I would like to mention when it comes to our sort of um, uh, limits uh, of our capacity to investigate has to do, as I mentioned, with what is in fact now in the process of being negotiated at the EU level, and it has to do with border control. Uh, I'm very much, uh, I'm placing a lot of uh, hope on the final, uh, if I may call it this way, uh, outcome of the negotiations uh, between both the Commission and the EU member states as to uh, the creation of a properly uh, independent, external, external from the authorities, external from the administration, mechanism uh, that would um, uh, undertake with a special mandate and special powers, uh, monitoring, will, will undertake the monitoring of those uh, agencies, be, they, be that uh, the armed forces or the police or the Coast Guard, that are tasked to, to uh, to, to, to operate in the borders of Europe, in the borders of each member state. So I'm really hoping... Including the EU agency itself, right? Um, I was uh, referring to my um, uh, extreme interest in the outcome of the negotiations uh, of uh, this specific part, uh, uh, that for, of this specific part of the overall discussion on the pact on asylum and migration, which relates to border control, and in fact, on the uh, hopefully on the setting up of an independent external mechanism uh, that would be more monitoring all those agencies that are operating uh, in the borders, including um, Frontex, uh, that is uh, not only now assisting uh, uh, national uh, agencies, national enforcement agencies, and defense agencies in uh, uh, patrolling uh, the borders, but it will um, uh, very soon. Uh, that's, the, that's what is stipulated in its uh, sort of, uh, in, in the legislation. It will assume a more proactive role when it comes to uh, patrolling uh, the borders of the European Union. So I feel uh, that there is a, 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 a clear need for a mechanism with uh, considerable powers and a very strong toolkit available uh, to perform uh, uh, investigations, to perform monitoring of the way that these agencies conduct their business in the borders. Mm -hmm. The other point I would like to raise when it comes, because you mentioned also, you asked me whether there are other bodies or other authorities that may also contribute towards uh, uh, investigating, fully investigating such allegations. Clearly, uh, the body, uh, the authority that uh, has all available means and powers to conduct a thorough investigation is the judiciary, uh, the prosecution. Uh, there, uh, we are, uh, they have all the means that perhaps are uh, not made available to an ombudsman institution. Uh, they may conduct own initiative uh, uh, investigations. They may conduct, they may launch own initiative investigations, just as we have. So they do not have to expect or to wait for an individual filing or appealing before a, a prosecutor so that the, a case uh, is opened. And in fact, back in 2017, when we launched our own initiative investigation, one political party represented back then, in fact, also in Greek parliament, had filed an appeal to the prosecution, to the prosecutor of the Supreme Court uh, in Greece to investigate the allegations that were reported back then. I mentioned again the period of uh, the summer of 2017. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what has happened to this investigation and how far it has gone since 2017. Um, one last point I would like to if I may, to, to also share with you, uh, as to the limits of our own capacity that I mentioned earlier. So on the one hand, there are limits of, on our own capacity that are attributed, if I may put it this way, 
to the statute and to the legislation, the framework uh, under which we operate. Uh, uh, a second set of difficulties uh, that we are having to deal with, especially uh, when investigating such allegations, has to do with uh, the level of cooperation that we do receive from uh, uh, a variety of organizations that may be involved in protecting uh, the rights of third country nationals. And I'm referring not only to NGOs, but also to international organizations. There, and we do report this also in our interim report, uh, there we have the, uh, what, what we, the level of cooperation we have received so far is that we do, we are made aware of uh, cases or of uh, incidents alleging uh, uh, pushbacks, but we uh, have not yet secured uh, such cooperation with these NGOs, uh, legal aid uh, organizations and international organizations, including the UNHCR. Uh, uh, our level of cooperation has not reached the point of actually sharing with us um, specific information on specific people that allege to have been pushed back so that we may in turn uh, conduct our investigation, cross-check the uh, allegations that are being made by these people, uh, corroborate, uh, verify, or uh, or not, of course, uh, the incidents and the particulars of the uh, incidents as they are being uh, sort of uh, reported by uh, those alleged victims of pushbacks. And therefore, um, we are trying to urge all these years, all these organizations to, um, provide with, to provide to us information that could form the basis of a more in-depth investigation. Unfortunately, in most of the cases, we have not been able to convince them to share such information. It is understandable. Because of uh, security concerns or... Um... Pardon me? Is it because of data security concerns or the respective? I don't think it is because of data security concerns because under our statute, the Greek Ombudsman has uh, the power and the right uh, to conduct investigations while preserving the anonymity of uh, the complainant. Let me put it this way. Uh, I think there is another reason uh, which has been uh, explained to us, and I, I find it also a, a, a valid reason, I have to say. Uh, so I'm not criticizing uh, uh, those organizations. Uh, and the reason has to do with the fear that uh, those alleged victims involved in pushback operations have, uh, given the fact that most of them have not yet secured uh, their legal status in Greece. So uh, many people uh, at least according to the international organizations and NGOs that have reached us and have uh, shared with us uh, uh, information on uh, alleged pushbacks, uh, many people involved in such uh, incidents are reluctant uh, to come to us or to uh, make a, a, a statement or testify to us so that we may also make use of these testimonies, of these statements, and we may also try to corroborate, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. the information shared with us, because they fear that this will affect the process and the likelihood of them getting some form of international protection uh, in Greece. Mm -hmm. Most of them are still in the sort of limbo status, legal status of asylum seekers. They have not yet secured uh, uh, some form of international protection, asylum or some other form of international protection, and therefore they are afraid uh, that this sort of, or, or that if they do uh, go public, if I may put it this way, uh, this might have a negative effect uh, on the chances of, the, of uh, their application for asylum uh, ever coming through. So I do, I do get the point, I do get that there is a credible uh, fear on their part. Uh, I'm just sharing with you that uh, one of the problems that we are facing is that it is all the more difficult for us 
to convince people to go public <laughs> and to share their experiences with us so that we may also make use of their statements, of their testimonies and um, advance our uh, uh, investigation. Having said that, uh, and I will conclude uh, by saying this, um, what is uh, extremely, uh, what is a new element, what is a new finding, if I may call it this way, and it is uh, extremely, I have to say, worrying and interesting, is that is that in the uh, recent, uh, recently, we have had cases reported to us of people who have already had some form of uh, contact with administrative services in Greece. They have been pre-registered or they have had some form of contact with admin uh, services. I'm not referring to the uniformed enforcement agencies, uh, which, may, which means basically that, this, that the claim that such incident did not take place within the Greek territory is even more difficult to defend. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking diplomatically. So uh, we are very interested in these incidents and we are very much interested in seeing how the authorities will reflect on them and uh, react, in fact, and whether the a proper uh, thorough, as I mentioned, investigation will be conducted so that we may also be able to, to uh, uh, contribute to an investigation and to follow the investigation uh, and to uh, also help our own investigation get, in, get a bit more deep into what is taking place. I understand. Fingers crossed, Mr. Potakis. Um, uh, we wish you all the best for this and hope that your investigations um, can be successful. I mean, we're talking about very serious allegations and very serious human rights um, violations here. Um, as I understand, you have just one last question. You have been focusing on, on two, um, two things so far. Uh, one is um, in terms of region and area. You, you've been focusing on the Evros River um, area, which um, of course makes sense given the, the many cases uh, we, have, we have read uh, about. But I mean, at the same time, uh, you know about the situation in the Aegean, the Greek-Turkish maritime border. Um, are you planning any investigation uh, regarding this border? First question. And also, um, I, I just happen to know that you recently met uh, Tineke Strick, who is the head of the um, EP Frontex Scrutiny Group, um, heading the investigation the European Parliament is um, currently um, currently working on regarding Frontex role. And um, you mentioned Frontex role several times during your interim report. Um, so it's one aspect here clearly is the role of the Greek authorities, but we also have the overall role of the European Union as you rightly pointed out. So I was just curious if you could say one, a few words about um, what you expect there um, at this front. And um, yes, I, I'm afraid we're running out of time. Sure, I will be very brief. First, we are investigating allegations of uh, pushbacks in the Aegean. Uh, we have received reports and we are conducting investigations on uh, claims of alleged pushbacks in the Aegean uh, for some years now. We are not ready to produce anything publicly, uh, but I assure you uh, our interest and our uh, sort of uh, focus of investigation is not limited to the land borders between Greece and Turkey. It, uh, it was just that this investigation in Evros, as I mentioned, was launched, was uh, commenced by a non-initiative uh, sort of decision to investigate. And therefore, I felt the need to produce at least some basic uh, preliminary, if I may call them this way, uh, findings and results and conclusions as to what we have done so far. I repeat, we are investigating incidents in uh, the Aegean uh, and uh, we do receive uh, alarming allegations of uh, alleged pushbacks that we um, uh, are taking very seriously. Now, uh, but I will leave it to that because I'm not, um, I would not like to get into more details uh, on this as we have not yet produced anything publicly. Now, um, <clears throat> indeed, it was a great pleasure and an honor to have had the opportunity to meet with uh, uh, Ms. Tripp. Uh, I, 
I had the opportunity to, to share with her my, my concerns and also the concerns of many of my colleagues, my peers across Europe on uh, the lack of sufficient transparency and accountability uh, on, when it comes to the Frontex involvement. Um, I have been uh, urging uh, policymakers both in my country and also to the extent possible uh, at the EU level of reconsidering uh, the mechanism upon which Frontex is to be held accountable. At present, Frontex is accountable, I suppose, only to the European Parliament and to the extent that the European Parliament can assess uh, the legality uh, of uh, the operations of Frontex. Uh, I'm sure that the members of the European Parliament would agree with me that this is an important, of course, oversight, but it is it has to be supported by uh, institutions like ombudsman institutions who are in the field, who do know what is taking place and who do receive, in fact, complaints by people who may have been uh, affected by illegal operations on the part of Frontex or any other enforcement agency. What I have also tried to, uh, to uh, highlight, if I may, uh, in, during my meeting with uh, Mrs. Strick is that um, I feel uh, that uh, we have to ensure that the level of transparency uh, exercised uh, in Frontex operation and the level of accountability uh, uh, that is uh, uh, set for Frontex operations should not be lower in any way or means than the level of transparency and accountability that we expect from national enforcement agencies. Um, I think this should be the sort of the rule. This should be the benchmark that we have. We all have to, to uh, aspire to. And in fact, um, as I was very pleased to have met and to have discussed and to have the opportunity to discuss a, a series of issues with uh, Ms. Tine Kestrick, I also shared with her uh, an initiative uh, that uh, I have taken with a number of my colleagues, uh, ombudsman, is the ombudsman and national preventive mechanisms mm -hmm. uh, uh, across the European Union. Already 12 such peer institutions support this initiative to set up uh, an independent composed of ombudsman and NPMs, uh, external clearly from Frontex, mechanism uh, to complement any such in, any internal mechanism that Frontex may wish to, to create. And I think that there has to be an internal mechanism as well, but also to have an external, independent, impartial uh, mechanism composed of ombudsmen and NPMs who do know exactly how to monitor uh, the performance of enforcement agencies so that we may create, as I mentioned earlier, the equivalent of uh, an accountability model for Frontex, like the one we uh, expect, and in fact, we have put in place within our national jurisdictions for our enforcement agencies. This is very interesting. Thanks a lot. Um, maybe you can send us um, any information on this initiative um, with your European colleagues. Yeah. Uh, just to share with you that it was an initiative that started in 2018, and we have uh, officially launched our initiative uh, by during a meeting we had in uh, Rome in 2019. Now, clearly, the COVID pandemic has not uh, uh, made it easy for us to further advance our joint uh, activities and, uh, in, uh, and mutual interests. But uh, as the pandemic uh, progressively subsides, we will uh, again uh, assume action and become uh, very proactive. Great. Mr. Potakis, thank you very much. I feel like we could go on for hours and uh, there are so many um, aspects to further discuss and to elaborate, but I think for today, this was a very good start to, to really shed some um, light on uh, relevant aspects of your recent interim report. And we very much look forward to continue the discussion and to further um, hear from you. So thanks a lot and hopefully hear you soon again. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity.